sirens, striped bass, bridges, islands, container ships. Yeah, this definitely has a different feel these days to me. <laughs> I grew up fishing this stuff if you're and it's yeah, it's like different when you're man. It's cool. I've been out here in a long time. <laughs> it feels kind of cool and refreshing, I'm not gonna lie. Like I don't know. It feels different. I see think I'm seeing some life out here. I'm just gonna bomb a couple casts and then keep pushing west, I think. Do I want to troll is the question. I really don't, but I might end up trolling a little bit today. I'm gonna cut out to about 10, 12 feet and then hook a right and a left. And should we troll is the question. All right. No, I think there's a couple fish here, man. I'm like marking some stuff. Yeah, there's definitely a few. Yeah, these are some fish in this zone here. All right, <laughs> got a bite. That's first strike bass. Third cast, maybe. I'm gonna keep a slot if I could get one. Um, might be a slot already. It's probably just shy. I don't think I want to. Sweet. Thanks, striper. Striped bass. I think most of these shallow fish aren't going to be too big, but I think I'm going to take fishing in peace versus running around with the, the Joe feet. Fleet. Yeah, gotcha. Thanks, dude. I think I might have a decent day here. They see me trolling. Okay, so these straight retrieve bites don't seem like they're getting really bit. Maybe I got a last bite was that jig and pop thing. Had a few bites on the fall. And these fish can get moody. Right, we know that. Usually aren't the most difficult fish, but they have their moments, right? that one. Oh, missed a real sluggish bite there. There we go. Oh, I got some birds working out here. These might be more aggressive fish. I kind of want to come back to these because this wind's supposed to kick up off the land later. And this can be my afternoon bite of just, you know, kind of goofing around with these fish. Just make a cast or two with this big buck. Use this reel like once for AJ's. <laughs> it's a little overpowered, honestly, for the fish that are probably gonna bite this morning, but use it or lose it, right? <laughs> I'm chucking some heavier jigs, so. Okay. Stepping up, right? Nice fish right there.
Here we go. Simple fishing. Couple fish blowing up out there. Is that what I'm seeing? Oh, maybe not out there. Right in front of me. Fish too, huh? Yeah, that's a good one. This is an over slot. So this is the first time I've been fishing around these new slot regulations. Um, I usually do release most of the fish, but okay. just be thankful for every fish that bites today. Nice. Kicking it old school. Seeing some fish in this tide line, I, I think. I could be wrong though. Some follows. They didn't look. For, they're not very big. What I'm getting follows from. Zombie eye, huh? Where were you spending your winter? <laughs> Where did you spend your winter to get that zombie eye? Not that many here, it seems like. You would think there'd be a lot of fish in this tide line. Might have a few fish here. Not too sure. They don't want to start trolling. Okay, been cruising around for know, about 30 minutes. Some south wind last night, so south wind blew warm water on the beach. Makes sense. Out there I was seeing 48, 49 degree water and close to the beach, so yeah, 50 degrees plus. Stick with the easy fish. This warmer water is on the beach here, strange. Can't tell if this is a really good fish that didn't run yet. Or just the usual stuff. Yeah, that's not bad. Let me just get my measuring board out. So 
a little later in the day I'll get an idea. I'm gonna keep a fish for sure, but I think I want sometimes I'm sometimes you forget visually what you're looking for. <laughs> Slot limit's very tight on striped bass now. I mean, in one sense, I do like the it's the right size to eat, and I do know that part. using this for reference. Okay, that's an overslot. Okay, just so I know. That gives me an idea. Fish is about 32 inches. I have a chatterbait too. I'm gonna keep that over there. All right, let me find a good batch of fish somewhere here. I see like some disturbed water up ahead. I think that's a school of fish just like milling about. These fish seem pretty scattered. Oh, well, that was a good fish. Nice clean release there. I think I had two fish fighting over this thing, man. Sure looks like. Nice fish, baby. Out. A lot of these fish are males actually. Everyone's like always thinking they're fem all females. Females are usually a little different time frame sometimes. Oh, this current's really moving right now actually. Just noticed how I'm moving almost a mile an hour. Getting some wind now too. I don't know if these fish are gonna keep biting in this wind. We'll try it. I do seem in an off mood right now, if you ask me. I don't know if I should try jigging these fish or what. There's definitely a few around, but they're acting weird. Uh-oh. Oh, no. <sighs> I think I beat this rod up in the car. That's my guess. It's all right. It's very, very old. Not that old, but definitely pushing five years. Since I'm traveling, what I usually do is I get all the rods in the car. And I don't leave them in the car, I put them in the kayak. So, lucky, my lucky day, I guess. <laughs> Granted, it's got a catfish set up on it, but I'll change that in a moment. Well, I'll we'll get that fixed in a day or two. No big deal. Probably don't need to fish with something so overpowered for 30 inch stripers anyway. 4,000 twin power feels massive for these fish. <laughs> At least on the kayak, the boat's different. Actually, I actually think I prefer the, the action of this Night Ranger.
Hey. Seems like there's a change of tide bite. There's a couple smaller fish for sure. This one's a keeper. Well, let's keep him. Wind's starting to kick up. I figure I might only have an hour or two left out here. So most of these fish are, I think their majority are Hudson River class in general. Okay. So there's always that, there's always that shrinkage, right? We don't want to keep anything exactly 28, but 29 is perfect. <laughs> oh my gosh, is he actually over? Yeah, he's a little over. Change. Try something kind of goofy. These do seem to work pretty well by me. Chatterbait. What I use sometimes in dirty water for my my local stripers. Maybe not. I think I overestimated them. That's also no good. I was kind of curious if the chatterbait was really great answer to this. Those fish sometimes get lock draw and all that stuff. There you go. Swipe at the kayak. Yeah. So now, I wonder what changes that behavior. How it's all bottom bouncing. Hopping three quarters of an ounce mostly. He's on there. Is he larger than I thought? He's just not doing much. This one looks like it's a slot, actually. <laughs> Maybe it's not. It's gonna be, you know, I kind of figured getting a 28 to 31 inch fish wouldn't be that hard, but I don't think so either. <laughs> I think that's another like 32. Wonder how many, how many times these schools of fish have been beat up for that, that slot size fish. Oh man, we did it. Look at that. We got a 30 inch fish. No ifs, ands, or buts. 29 and a half. All right, this is perfect size to eat. I think those are fresh migratory signs. All right, let's keep this guy. Kidoki. Now I'm gonna keep moving. Like out of touch, you know? Probably should have left these fish a long time ago. Part of me is not quite, you know, 
gets in tune. Paddle tail has a lot of like, it's, you know, common complaint I always get is it's really soft, but when you want that subtle eight foot jigging presentation, you know, soft is good sometimes. You know, I remember over the years, we you get that frequent lock jaw bite of, they wouldn't hit on the retrieve, they won't hit on the troll. These fish won't hit on the troll today at all. But, you know, if you didn't have live bait or chunks or whatever you're trying to work with, sometimes that, this jigging bite is like one of the few ways they'll sometimes start to eat. And it's like not always that this works, it's funny. Might be it for the jigging bite too. Yeah, I was looking for a different patch of fish and got bit trolling. Don't want to be on top of these guys. It's never makes sense to fish on top of somebody, in my opinion. But yeah, everyone can have their reasons. I'm sure there's different classes of fish around, but yeah. up a little bit too actually. Man, I love this thing. <laughs> Still doesn't make trolling all that cool in my opinion. I think that was a, a bunker or a bluefish right there. This is how, <laughs> it's kind of how it began. I'm not gonna knock on him doing a little trolling right now, moving spot to spot. Trolling is really an excellent way to learn any fishery out there. At the end of the day, you know, I get it. It might not be for you and it might not be for me, but. Yeah, average size fish is excellent. You know, I haven't done this in a few years, but I don't think I've had it. Any sub, uh, I mean, most of these fish are all 32, 34s. You know, which ain't a great thing if you're saying, oh, we need more schoolies. But oh, these fish should spawn. That's a better class of fish to have around to spawn. And on top of that, you know, single hooks that were at least really well. It's not like you really got to worry about killing those fish too much when the water's cold. Only have one look like you know high 30 inch fish follow so far. So, might not be the right time of year for the real big ones. Where well, they're around, and and I'm kind of tempted to go look like really shallow, like three to five feet. Even. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Fish are on the bottom. It's very strange. 
didn't move that shad at all. So weird. Strange behaviors. Striper. Acting more like a catfish. You can always bend the barbs on some of these jig heads that have the wire bait keepers. Like you can just take a pair of pliers and bend them so then they'll reinsert back into a different positioning. This way you get a little more prolonged, prolonged use. You could like twist them, etc. I don't know, maybe this stuff makes a difference. <laughs> it's the greatest placebo effect out there, this thing. Because you're like, oh, I'm catching fish great now. Especially like if you just put it on and then you make a first cast, then you hook a fish, you're like, oh. It's because of the Procure. <laughs> I might be able to find better conditions up on the beach so I could jig them. I'm gonna tell you one thing I really like about this too, is when I start getting really hot, because you're in this dry suit, like I take a break. Like I like to pedal a lot, but it's nice to take a little bit of a break and cool back off. You, you got to use this stuff as anecdotal stuff. Like, for the most part, stripers aren't doing well in many places. Um, from what I understand, it's like New Brunswick's population is doing really well. And, you know, the Hudson class seems to be doing well to really well. For most people you ask around this area, I'm sure there's some pockets of areas that don't have fish like they used to, but. It sounds like everyone's like, wow, I'm catching more fish than I did years back. And I kind of, I don't know. I don't know, maybe we all became better anglers. Years back, this was a different fishery. Water was dirtier more often. There was a lot more snow melt back when I was a kid. So when the snow, we had a lot of that snow melt, I feel like this fishery was hard. And the other thing that changed a lot is the big blue fish would sometimes show up right about now even, some years. And like, I'm talking like, huge schools of them so like when those bluefish used to show up back in the day like all of this was impossible like so i don't know there's been a lot of changes like but those are the two i can think of is the bluefish used to roar through somewhere second week of april some years but usually it was like third week it was pretty much <laughs> 15 miles of bluefish if you're trying to fish with lures and not really getting into the right like as a kid, if I came out here and did this, probably, maybe this week I'd be okay. But like a lot of other times of the year, I'd be catching 10 pound bluefish, cast after cast, and maybe one striped bass. Like that was what it was. So now it's different. Without the, with the lack of bluefish, maybe it's just easier to catch these stripers than it used to be. Maybe the stripers aren't getting pushed off anymore, like into their spawning grounds immediately. I don't know. It's hard to say. And like I said, less snow melt definitely changed these bites too. I mean, this doesn't look clean to you and me probably, but it used to be right. Plumes of coffee. Yeah, I won't talk too much about gear. People get annoyed. I won't even mention this because, you know, we live in the age of product selling. If you like the channel, there's a link in the video's description for more information about this. Um, I feel like Mike's best rod for 
striper jigging is this Night Ranger though. I find the 2500s from Penn and the 3000s from most other brands to be the, the sweet spot in the real category. So one of the things too is, oh my gosh, there's so many fish. <laughs> Whoa. Switch to Southwest. Uh, hard for a few days and I think that blew a lot of the warmer water on the beach here and not out in the channels that makes sense then we're gonna get some of that northeast and it's gonna change it again <laughs> I guess I could just stick with these so I guess I'm pretty sure I just can't troll fish to find fish no matter what I want to do here So years back, man, I've never caught a black drum here, but I've seen them, you know, before I really understood how to fish for them. So I'm like so tempted to really put in a lot of time here for a couple of those big black drum that roam these parts. But yeah. That's a nice fish right there. Yeah, that's a good one right there. Like they want you to do in just something stupid, like a really weird rhythm. Here. He's just running at me. Crackhead. down on the bottom for sure. That retrieve, I was really, I just realized how much I was ticking bottom. Don't, 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 don't. Don't, 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 don't. 
go. Just back it out nice and gentle. All right, we're gonna try something too. So I tried this years back and I didn't like it and that was crushing my barbs. Um, like I was landing like, you know, one out of four fish and it's been years. So I'm gonna give it a try. Okay, because I'm reaching the point of the day where this is all I, I wanted. All right? Next few trips, we'll try something different. All right? Catch, catch as many 10 to 20 pound stripers as we want here. Oh, he's got a menhaden or bunker in his in his gullet too. Probably could see that. Okay. You know, generally, stripers have good release mortality this time of year, but what I did is I just crushed down the barb on this hook. Years back, I tried this and did lose a lot of fish. And, you know, I don't really fish for trebles for these fish for that reason. It's supposed to be more roller coaster weather, so, all right, I got in the saddle. I'm not getting any more bites, honestly. Uh, I just rolled around a bunch of different areas where I've done well in years past. I've seen a few fish sporadically here, nothing crazy. Uh, what kind of what I'm thinking, but I do want to try to do something a little different. Yeah, that wind swap more southwest. Darn it. I think we're close to home. I did get a good amount of time out here, but that did cut it a little short at the same time, having that southwest swap. Let's see. So we crushed the barbs now. That's the latest theme. Maybe tomorrow we'll do a full day of crushed barbs. And, you know, sometimes I'm a little apprehensive about it too. But let me, see, let me give it a shot again. It's been a few years. a nicer fish. <laughs> it's giving me those blue cat vibes from Virginia the other day. It's staying deep on me. So the good thing about the crushed barb though is let's say you actually hook it kind of in the gills. You know, if it's crushed, you know, you just kind of run it back out and it's got a, fish has got a much better chance of survival, that's for sure. Like that's the reason, you know, if you just kind of get, poke it with the, through the gills with this, you know, I think you got a decent shot at not killing that fish. No, uh, switch bait ain't getting a bite. Had high hopes, high hopes for that.
Okay, that's a better fish. Could be the warm up, getting them a little more, a little more feisty. I think it's the warm up. All right. So, so far, two for two on the crushed barb, right? I mean, I'm going to count this as a as a fish, even if I lose them right here, because let's say I had a net and all those things. Yeah, it's a pretty nice one. I got a wind knot on my, my pen clash. Very pen of me. And of course it tangled it in this gripper. Nice fish, man. <laughs> Such a coogan. Oh man. It, see, the best part about the YouTube stuff is you see what kooks we, we all are. You know, we're all a mess. That short form content, you could hide anything on short form content. Long form, at some point, you're gonna show your total goober. You just gotta embrace it. You know what I'm saying? Gotta embrace the goober. Come on, man, I suck at this these days. Okay. Cool. All right, that was an easy one on the crushed barb. Well, it came out nice and easy. Nice fish, too. I always feel like the one when they got their, their spines up like that. You know, they're usually what you'll see their 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 spines depressed when they're when they're more stressed. It seems like when the water's cold, you'll see that spine all nice and all gleaming too. All right, seems like I hit that midday lull. All right, these fish stopped eating. I mean, they're not eating great anymore. Like I'm picking a fish here and there. Oh, I missed one right there actually. Like the bites are definitely getting harder to come by. I mean, <laughs> still getting a few, but there's one. It's slow jig. Ooh. Sure missed coming out here and getting those big blues, though, man. Doing it on these flats. Yeah, stripers are a lot of fun, but uh, there's a lot of nostalgia with the big blues going just crazy out here. Had another fish following it. It's pretty cool. Ready to start working my way in. Some good old nostalgia fishing, man. Fishing with nostalgia. That pen slammer performed pretty good today. Pen clash, not so much. <laughs> Got all day tomorrow too. More or less have all day today, but kind of want to settle in, get myself a sub, salami, gabagool, tomatoes, red, roasted red peppers. Yeah, looking forward to that. I didn't bring lunch on the water with me today. I was kind of, I actually was running a little late too, unfortunately, so. But yeah, that's all I was thinking about. I was like, I'd love to get myself a little, a little bit of that. I'm trying to get back to the launch and keep running over fish. I guess it's a good problem. This is really quiet for... 
you know, it's really nice out. I mean, minus the, all the sirens in the background and all that other stuff. Doing his best bluefish impression. All right, that's three for three on the crushed barbs, right? This fish I would count as landed if I had a net. I would be able to get this one in too. old scar on that one I think it's also all about you know if you can avoid slack at all costs with a crushed barb that's really the key if you get slack with crushed barb it's pretty much over so some situations I guess you, you really can't do it but I, you know what I think I'm gonna do it uh, more often from here on out a lot of it has to do with confidence too man you know you, you land a couple really big fish with crushed barbs you, you'll, you start to build that confidence, I guess, too. Better for you, better for the fish. Like I said, whenever I, I do fish with trebles, which isn't very often, I also do that crushed barb stuff with those, too. Let's see. Let's just see how easy it is to drop it. Let's give it a little slack, see if I lose him. Nah, he's still on there. I mean, I thought, oh yeah, that gives you an idea, right? So I gave him a little slack, he came right off. That's the, uh, gotta get used to that there. Guess if you don't like touching fish, <laughs> it's an easy way to do it too. Oh man, they are freaking fired up right now. Another one lost. That one I did not give slack to. This one's holding on pretty good. All right, this is how you usually lose them, right? You know, you're messing around at the boat or the kayak. Let's see, okay, so that's another, you know, 32 inch fish or so. Let's see, I'm gonna give him some slack. Okay, about that time. Well, he's on it pretty good. Just you get them in the hard part, you're pretty much, yeah, this one got hooked really in a zone that you're on them. So straight bass, and there he goes. It's cruise control home. Some good fishing. Let's see what we do tomorrow. Hey, you think of something different tomorrow, I think. None of them showed signs of, uh, I should say, like pre-spawn, the males are usually like they're usually oozing right about now. None of those fish even showed a sign of pre-spawn behavior. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Let's call it a day. Beautiful day at that. <laughs>